What's up, guys? Hey, welcome. Gals. Yeah. Guys and gals. Guys and yes. gals. Guys and gals. Guys and gals. Welcome, guys and gals. Yes. Welcome to today's episode. Today we are talking about a very important topic, a very important subject matter today. Did you like how I kind of went there with that voice? It's kind of like a movie theater. Yeah, uh, I was going like real country, Texas. Hey, hey guys and gals. <laughs> And you're like, let's do 60 minutes. Let's do 60 <laughs> We're here <laughs> on 30 minutes. <laughs> so today's topic is powerful. Thank you for tuning in. You're going to be blessed by it, we know. Mm. But today's subject is one that is uh, kind of goes against the grain. Goes against the grain of, I think, human nature. Of go big or go, go home. home. Yeah, yeah, a big Texas motto for sure. But today we are talking about how we actually have victory in small steps. It's the little things the little in the day-to-day -day life that really makes the difference. It makes the big change. So stay tuned. All right, so victory in small steps. What does that even mean? <laughs> no, I know what it means. <clears throat> you know what it means? Well, the thing is, I didn't know what that meant for quite some time. And we learned that as we were uh, kind of going on in our marriage. A like, lot of... like everything else, we learned it the hard way. Yeah, we like learning things the hard way. But that's okay, because you get to benefit from that. <laughs> so there yeah. you go. Victory in small steps. What that means is... It takes little steps each and every day that lead to big results. Most of the time we think the opposite. We think we got to make one big change and everything will be better. But what that actually does is sets us up for failure and sets us up yeah. for uh, uh, something that, that is impractical, that we can't accomplish and can really, when you get to the heart of it, suck that joy and that hope out of us. Yeah, I know for me, like, uh, when I would see all of the problems, because usually, you know, like when you're fighting, it comes to a head, right? Like, you come to this moment where you finally have it out. And then, say you make up, and now you're on the same page, and you're trying to work things out, and you just want to fix it everything that you just unleashed in the argument because you know how like when you get in the army and you start talking about all the other things that cause the problems too so you list out all these problems and it's like yes let's fix everything and have the perfect marriage and the perfect family yeah just and me. i know <laughs> I, I think in perfect marriage and family will look different for each and every one of us so we all have that ideal of what we want our family to look like and a lot of times we're trying to hit that certain place or we feel like we should already be there. And when we don't see it, then mm -hmm. we lose hope. We start seeing more of the problems. Then we're focusing on more of the problems and we never get to where we want to be. Mm -hmm. And I, I know for, for me, where I would get in our life is we wanted, we did, we wanted to be just a great married couple. We both came from failed marriages. And whenever we came together, we both had our kids and we blended them together and we wanted this yeah. perfect relationship. We, we wanted... not only came from like um, an imperfect marriage before, but did you already say this and I spaced out, but like growing <laughs> up. <laughs> like... So everyone listening, has your spouse ever spaced out on you while you're talking? I don't think this is what you were saying, but we both grew up in from divorced families as well. Correct. Did you say that? Oh, no, I did not say that so either. We so we didn't really ever see like a real hell. I mean, our parents did the best they could with what they had, but we didn't see a healthy marriage modeled. And then we came out of our own unhealthy marriage that didn't work for whatever reason on all of the occasions. And so now we were trying to create something that really we had never experienced or witnessed. Yeah, for, for sure. Besides and on TV. Well, I know me growing up, my, my parents didn't divorce until later on. So, you know, I kind of had a, a core family dynamics growing up. For, oh, yeah. Throw that for, in my face. Well, I'm just saying that we did come from a little bit different yeah, yeah, dynamics. Right, right. And it wasn't until later on in my teenage years whenever, you know, my parents had uh, divorced. And at that time, I didn't realize how much that weighed on me. 
So, you know, and of course, uh, I'm carrying that into my marriage and, you know, not, not knowingly, right? And, but it's, it's this fear of divorce. I think we all have even, um, I, I think we, we all know the statistics and know divorce is always an option and we see divorce more and more in our family and our friends. And so there's always, whenever you enter into a marriage, there's always that, that fear, or even maybe, you're sitting here saying, you know, well, I can always leave, <laughs> you know, and maybe that, that, that is that mindset that, that you go in saying, well, I'm going to try it. And if it doesn't work, then no harm done. But we all know that that's not the case, especially when kids are involved. There is a lot of harm that comes from that. And so whenever we came together, we both had our past, our divorces and coming together, we threw divorce off the table. We said, we're not going to divorce. Now, did we, did that mean everything was perfect? Heck no. No. Mm -hmm. In fact, our, we, you know, we've shared before the first several years, we struggled figuring out how to parent together and it led to a lot of division. We should share with them in the show notes, the episode on divorce, because we do go into more detail of when that did start to creep into our mind, even though we had made like our own set idea that we're not going to get divorced this will work and blended families we start seeing a lot of issues a lot more than just a nuclear family and whenever we start seeing these issues we either have that fight or flight mentality which is a normal human response but most of us who are sitting there saying no we're not divorcing i don't want to go down that road again you know it's like we're going to fight for our marriage we're going to fight we're going to do this we're going to try to make this the best we can and you start uh, gathering information. And I know for me, I got to a point where it's information overload. Mm -hmm. I start hearing, you know, I I wanted to know how all the great marriages lasted. What did they do successfully and how did they do it? And I start learning all these uh, tools and techniques and tips and tricks. And I'm hearing that from everywhere because I'm just engulfing myself, overloading myself with information. And so what I would do is I felt like we've got to do it all now. It's all going to be done right now. That way we can be okay. That, you know, what I like to call the easy button. Let's just hit that easy button so it all gets better. <laughs> and when we do that, mm-hmm. we, we're setting ourselves up for failure. Yeah, and like for me, like I was saying, kind of what you're saying too, it's, okay, we're going to make this work, so let's sit down and make a plan. Yeah. And our plans would be a little outrageous. Well, we would sit there and we would draw up contracts. Because we heard <laughs> in a book that you should have contracts. So we're like, With your okay. kids. And so you draw up all these rules and all these laws. And, and this happened and this happened. And it's like, and if you um, get a ticket in your car when you're 16, then our kids were like eight. <laughs> <laughs> then this is going to happen and you won't have driving privileges. But they tell the you to plan ahead. <laughs> <laughs> So we do. We, we created all these ridiculous plans and, you know, we're sitting down yeah. our five-year-old saying, sign this paper. Sign this. <laughs> Promise you're going to eat dinner and if you don't, so. And we wanted them to sign the contract and then we hung them on the fridge. <laughs> we did. We put things on the fridge and I'm telling you, we, we just thought... Or this... we had the binder. Remember when we oh, made it real binders. official with the binder. This binder was going to make our family function really well. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all these ridiculous plans that we can come up with. And we're laughing because we've been through it. You might be laughing because you've either been through it or you're in the middle of it. Or maybe you've heard that and are trying to figure out, you know, what plan to do and how to move forward in that. So it, we, we can just get to these places in our lives to where it is. It's information overload or we're trying to fix everything right now. And it's just impractical we can't do that and so what we learn and we learn this the hard way of course that's why we're sharing it yeah. uh, and we learn this from many different sources but the truth is is there is no single easy button that you can hit to fix your family to make it the way you feel is perfect for you there is it's not it's not real because we're all humans and as humans we all have choices and we all have different ideas and so it's really trying to come together and find a solution that 
you all agree with that you all say okay you know what it's a compromise let's let's figure out what how we want our family dynamics to be but the power is not just in saying okay let's do this one thing or let's do all these right now but the power comes from taking small steps each and every day Mm -hmm. so it's kind of like this analogy and I, i love this uh Actually, it was a Dean Graziosi who has used this before, but he used the tractor mentality. And basically, you're a, a, a guy who works on the farm. He owns this big tractor, and every day he goes out into the field and works the field. And what happens is once you go from point A to point B long enough, you start building ruts. You start building uh, indentions to where all of a sudden the tractor can almost run by itself. Yeah. And that's kind of like us and our families. We can get uh, into this mentality of we're doing the same thing over and over and over again, that we're doing these things without even knowing what yeah, we're Yeah, they doing. become our habits. Even if we don't create these habits, they are our ha- Everything we do every day is the habits of our lives. Exactly. And the tractor analogy is, but if that person knows that this isn't where they're supposed to be, that there's a much better uh, feel, there's a much better place that he needs to be, which is completely different from where he's going. Now he has built this path for so long, you can't do one big swing to get out of it. If not, because these ruts, you're gonna keep hitting these ruts and it's gonna keep pushing you right back into it because you're meeting this resistance, this resistance that you've created over time. But the power comes from taking that wheel and just shifting it just a little, like a quarter turn. And whenever you do that, now it's it's starting to bring that indention down. And over a course of time, the more you're taking these little, little turns, little by little, it's going to take you to where you can't even see the place where you were before. You're going to go exactly where you've been wanting to go. So it's those little steps, those little things that we do over a long period of time, you get a big result. The thing I love about that analogy is the fact that if you do try to change everything at once, like I had the habit of doing and Randall saying as well, um, and you do hit up against those thing, those ruts, um, the pathway that you've been created, that resistance is there. And it's going to be like that in your family when all of a sudden you want to change things and they're like, but this is how we've done things for however long, healthy or unhealthy. They're like, this is what we know. So if you start trying to change everything, they're going to resist, even if it's something that's good for them. But if you start making these little changes in these areas that you can control each day, it's like they don't even realize it's happening until they just are reaping the benefits of being on the other side. Exactly. Like one, one thing we would do, uh, uh, kind of another thing to relate it to is kind of like our food. Like we wanted to eat healthier. And in our uh, kind, of, kind of the way that we've done things before is, is it's not always easy to eat healthy. And so we would eat just randomly. We wouldn't have good plans and everything. And initially we would try to change everything. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. We try to come up with a big old game plan to do everything all at once. And it always fell. We'd wind up going right back to the same stuff, eating the same things. But what we learned taking this small steps is we would take one meal at a time. Okay, let's just get breakfast down. Let's try to figure out our breakfast mm-hmm. and let's get that right. And same with our families. Maybe you're you're struggling with your relationship with maybe your stepkid. Uh, or maybe you're struggling with many relationships within your family dynamics. You're, you're taking just one intentional thing that you're doing and you're saying, you know what, I'm going to learn how to handle that relationship better. I'm going to make those small little changes each and every day. Maybe it is pouring that encouragement, uh, waking up you know, every day and making sure you're saying one positive thing to each one of your kids. Maybe that's just the thing that you're doing. You're making that intentional. And it's not big. You're not trying to change all of your relationships all at once. But you know that there's power whenever we encourage each other. Mm-hmm. But it's being intentional on doing just one thing one thing each and every day and before long that becomes a habit it becomes that path that you want to go to to where you get the big results in your family yeah i was going to show just an example you shared with the food uh, situation just as far as what that might look like in um, your blended family and with those relationships like for me 
um, when I want to change it all at once, I'm like, okay, Randall and I are dating every single week. Uh, we're going to have one date night. And then me and the kids are each going to have one, one kid per week every month. And I'll write it out for like six months or even my whole calendar. And I, cause I love like doing like year of dates and I'll write out dates for all of my kids. And it's a good thing to shoot for, but it's very impractical that it's gonna work out that way, that everybody's schedule is gonna line up just right and that's gonna happen. But the thing that we have found that's successful is that we picked one day that we're all gonna come together. And one day on Sunday nights, we have dinner and that we have been able to see success, being able to choose just that one day. Now, if we get those extra dates in that we're trying, that's amazing, but not trying to bite off more than you can chew. like right in the beginning when you're not here and when you do this i think another thing that another trap we will fall into is we feel like we've got to do it successfully 100 mm, percent. that's true and what we learned is even with our sunday meals we would initially if all of our kids didn't show up it's like well do we even do it i mean what's the point you know and like we, i would seriously quit yeah, <laughs> I'd be like i'm not doing this anymore felt like it was a failure like we didn't succeed but in reality, once we got to where we can be flexible and we know that it doesn't matter if it's 100%, we're just having an open invitation and who shows up. If they show up, we're going to celebrate that. We're going to have fun. We're going to eat a meal together. And then changing your mindset on that. If they don't show up, then he and I have one-on-one -on -one time to have a meal together. Or if just one of the kids is there, we have quality time with them. So not seeing it as an all or nothing, which I can get in that mentality, but seeing the... Um, changing that mind shift and or mindset and shifting it and thinking okay well if that doesn't work out then we'll just enjoy this i will say i failed yesterday though <laughs> <laughs> were you going there or no i was not i did fail and that's oh i just wanted to to share that because i'm i'm still working at it myself too um, when things catch me off and i don't take time to process it so i planned this whole um, if y'all watch the episode will it have come out yet yes yeah okay it'll the, be last monday's episode last monday's episode cold case uh um, last friday i'm sorry oh sorry yeah mm. uh but i planned it all because my youngest loves these cold cases these five like murder mystery type things and so I text her a few hours before we were going to start and she's like, oh, I'm not sure if we're coming because uh, my dad invited me to go eat too. If you're a wife, do you feel like it's hard to talk to your husband? How about you guys? Do you ever feel like it's difficult to talk to your wife? And most of the time as a blended couple, it almost always ends up being about the kids. This is one of the areas that was really hard for me and Scarlett to figure out. It took us many years in our marriage before finding a real solution. You either end up bottling it all up on the inside or you just end up blowing up all over each other. Both ways leave you feeling unheard, frustrated, or really just mad at each other. For sure, but once we learned how to work through our issues instead of letting our issues wreak havoc in our marriage, we were so much more equipped to create better solutions to all the parenting issues that came up in our family. Instead of fighting and arguing about things, we were able to start working through them and working together as a team, and it actually brought us closer together. We want you to have the opportunity to have the same playbook that it took us years to figure out so that you and your spouse can be on the same page a lot quicker and help you overcome a lot of the parenting drama while getting better solutions for both of you. So right now, we are pre-selling the same page parenting playbook. The cool thing is, during this pre-sale, we're giving it to you half off. And we're also throwing in a lot of free bonuses with it. Now, the bad news is, this pre-sale is only going on until October 29th. After that, you miss out on this amazing deal. So don't wait, get it today so you don't miss out. The link for more details on the Same Page Parenting Playbook is in the show notes below. We've had so many parents telling us this is the number one issue that they face as a blended family. So get it today before this amazing offer goes away. You don't wanna miss out on this. Now back to the episode. And if you're in a blended family, which I'm sure you are because you're listening to this, you know the pain of that, right? Like it the just, other, the co-parent comes in. And I'm like, <laughs> why does he always get to trump my eye? You know, like it's not fair. I've been planning this out. And so I reworded my text multiple times to her before I actually pushed send. But I did still guilt trip her. I'm like, well, I've been planning this specifically for you. Like... That's why I was doing this. And I planned this like three weeks ahead. Three weeks ahead <laughs> and told you so that, you know, you could be here. Like, I hate for you to miss it. 
because we would have to go on without her, right? Um, and so I tell Randall, and he's like, well, you didn't send it yet, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did send it. But then I didn't feel like I could do a retraction because then I felt like it was like messing with her mind. So I just sat on it for a while, and then she's like, okay, never mind. Dad's going to pick me up later in the week. Well, duh, it was my plans first. But <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I try to raise the kids to like, whoever invites you first, that's what you do. You don't quit on somebody because you have a better offer. But anyways, it's a whole <laughs> other episode. But so I did let it get to me. I did send the guilt text. She did change. And so he comes in later, have you guilted her into coming in? And I was like, yes, I have. <laughs> so then I apologized to her and I'm like, sorry, I should have thought through that before I sent you the text. It just, it hurt. It hurt me because I was putting out the effort. So just being real in those moments and letting them know as well. So I hope that didn't take us too far off track. <laughs> well, that, that lets everyone know. Though. I mean, we, no one is perfect. We're not going to get this right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whenever we sit here and we say, take small steps to big victories, I mean, that this is, are we going to hit it 100% of the time? No, but it's knowing is, is a lot of the battle is just knowing how to mm -hmm. achieve great success. And once we know that, now we're better equipped to move forward. And now what I want to shift into is there is power in information. There's power in you listening to this today. There, there's power in gaining this knowledge that we all learn from each other, that we learn from people who have uh, been there before us. There, there's so much power in that. So like, uh, you know, we would, to, to, for us to get to where we were, we were looking at all types of resources. We get information from books. We took parenting classes. We've been to counseling. We've been, you know, over all of our 15 years, we've just continuously grabbed that information so that we could become better. Yeah. But even with all that, we didn't, we, we learned not that we couldn't do it all at once. You know, that we would take a new step this day and, and then we would put these little practices into place day in, day out. And it has led to great change in our lives mm -hmm. instead of trying to take one big swing and, and change everything like we did initially in the first few years of our marriage. We've seen such better results by taking these small steps. And there's so many things that once you do the small steps and you have these new habits in place, you really don't have to deal with those issues anymore. But then maybe months, a year or whatever come down the road and that same thing, like I was saying with the story that I just shared, like something triggers that. And your automatic reaction is sometimes to go back to what you did before. And like, I have to tell myself, this isn't how I do things anymore. Like I've stopped yelling or getting into a, a yelling match with, with my youngest because her and I can go um, head to head sometime. And she was gone for a while living at her dad's. And when she came back, she wanted to get back into that same, not intentionally, but get back into what she's always known, which I say something, she disagrees. I disagree. We go until we're escalated and yelling and I came back to these situations where we're head to head again and I just have to stop and say no this isn't how I do things anymore I do things differently and remind yourself like oh oh yeah I already learned this I don't have to act that way anymore I don't have to do those things anymore but that's what changed y'all's relationship to where yes. you are now is whenever you got to where y'all were fixing to go back head to head you pulled yourself back from the information you would learn because you knew that that was an issue. So you took one issue mm -hmm. and then you said, let me gain some information on that. How can I handle that differently? And then you did it time in and time out on many different levels. Of oh, and she gave plenty of opportunities to practice. <laughs> so don't worry. Whatever you decide that you're going to change, your family will give you plenty of opportunities to practice. But it was taking that time to where finally you knew because you had already obtained that information and you said, no, I'm not doing that. And you never allowed it to escalate. Mm -hmm. And then that started changing y'all's dynamics together to yeah. where really y'all's relationship now is better than it's ever been before. Yes, for sure. Uh, before, you know, there was big trust issues and stuff with each other, but now, you know, she is coming to you and you're actually talking. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we are at a completely different level now. Like she's just opening because... up with things that she never would have before because of my reaction before would have just shut her down because yeah. I was right, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Because <laughs> parents were normally always right. We're right. You know I, I mean, mean right, it's, right. it's just it, yes. you know, so. <laughs> but it is. There, there's power in taking these small steps. There's power in knowledge. 
let, let me say this, there's power and potential knowledge. Okay, or knowledge is potential power. We, we've grown up and, and I, I love uh, uh, Tony. He uh, has taught this, Tony Robbins has taught this so, so many times and we've, we've had the privilege of hearing that, but we've grown up knowing or hearing that knowledge is power. There's power in knowledge. And there's a false belief, a false system to that because it's not, knowledge is not power, but it's potential power. Mm. It's action is where the power is. You know, it's that kinetic uh, action to where you see power. It's kind of like in God's words, and, and I related a lot to, to him, that, that where in James, James says that it's not just about knowing, it's about doing. Faith without action is dead. And it's like we can know God's words, we can hear it, we can study the Bible, we can go to church on Sundays and, and get filled. But if we don't do what he's called us to do, if we don't do the words he's speaking, if we don't love others as we love ourselves, if we don't learn to love yeah. ourselves, if we don't learn to understand who we are as a child of God, and, and if we don't understand the grace of God, if we don't step in that, we miss it. You know, we just continue going back to our old routine, our old habits, and seeing the same results. Mm. I think it was, a uh, was it Thomas Edison or, no, it was a... Uh, uh, You're a quote and fool today. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, oh, who was it? Was it Mark Twain or somebody? But uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over yeah, and over and expecting, expecting different, different results. results. Yeah. So, no, Albert Einstein, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll get the quote right eventually, I'm but the quote is powerful. I'm glad it came to you. I'm glad it came <laughs> the, to you. The quote is powerful, but we do, as parents... And a lot of times that's why we consider ourselves chasing our tails. It's like, man, we mm -hmm. can't get over this one thing. Well, it's because we haven't taken the proper actions to get through it. And taking the proper actions doesn't mean one big change. It means many daily changes. It, it means daily changing of habits. Just a little, just a little turn. Like we talked about the tractor. You're just learning, okay, what's the biggest issue I've got right now? Let me get the right resources, the right knowledge, the right tools. And then let me start doing little shifts every day to see big changes. And mm -hmm. when you start approaching it that way in your family, I'm, I'm telling you, you will see so much positive results. You will see more peace in your household. You'll see more peace within yourself. Mm -hmm. You'll see it spill over into your kids. Your dynamics between you, your kids, you and your spouse are going to change. But it's those daily habits. It's those daily shifts that you do instead of trying to do one big swing and change everything right now. So, you know, let, let, that, let, let that be a blessing to you as far as... Uh, you know, knowing that because we, we didn't, like I said, we didn't know this initially. It took us years to learn it. And now as we've learned it and we've implemented that into our lives, we've seen the power in it. And, and there there is. And um, one thing that we are doing, which you, you probably heard the ad that we had in here, uh, really of the product that we are pre-selling right now. If you're having issues with uh, you and your spouse not being on the same page, yeah. or, or maybe you want to get better at both of you becoming on the same page with your parenting, that you know maybe there's some static, the, you're, you're seeing things differently uh, on raising your kids than the way your spouse is, and there's conflict, y'all don't know how to talk about it well, uh, maybe you want to get better at it, maybe you're just really failing in this area, Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you, you just really want more knowledge and you want to be the best, right? You want to be better each and every day. We are pre-selling that right now. So check that out in the bio because we're putting an amazing deal on that for you. We want it to be put into your hands. Yeah, and it's something that will work with any of the things you come face to face with. So it's not like, okay, if you're dealing with this problem in your blended family, then do this. If you're dealing with this problem, do this. It's something that you can put into practice that regardless of the issue that comes up, it's something you and your spouse can learn to be on that same page and work through this process um, so that you do have a result or some idea of what the solution might be at the end of it and then being able to put that into practice. So we just help walk you through like recognizing that and then coming up with those solutions and then putting some intentionality on walking through it. 
And the cool thing is, is it's going to be for you. You can do it in your house and it's yours. You can go rewatch it, redo some of these playbooks, uh, lessons over and over and over again. So it's, it's yours, you know, and the cool thing is it doesn't go away. So that is there for you. We want that to serve you. We want that to help you just to get to that next level, to be able to take a small step each and every day. You can put this into practice each and every day. That way you and your spouse are on the same page, parenting your kids together instead of trying to parent separately and creating divisions and walls. So there's there's power in that, but it, it's, it really is just gaining information on problems or issues that you're facing and trying to become better at them each and every day. Are any of us going to be perfect at it? No, there is no perfect mm -hmm. in us. There is only we get better each and every day. And that's really the, the overall goal as a parent is it's not to be perfect because no one will. Only yeah. Jesus was perfect. <laughs> but yeah. us as parents, it is that that just each and every day we try to get a little better. And if we do that, that's a big win, right? And when we do that, like like we were saying, you're going to be in a completely different field than yeah, like you next were year this time when you start doing those those little things, you're going to see um, that improvement. And I did want to mention like this though the way we've created it for you so that it's short, um, it's valuable, but it's something you can put into place like immediately. Again, it's not an easy button. You do have to do work and create new habits and talk and work things out but it is um quick and like easy to absorb i guess to take in yeah. so that you and your spouse can start doing something even like as quick as today because we have a whole eight week road map that will take you through all these different things and help um put all of these different scenarios that might come up in a blended family and help walk you through that like hand in hand for eight weeks we yeah. have that uh, but this is like a quick let me, I need something now. I, I can't wait eight weeks. I need something right now that to change in my family because I can't do this anymore. So many people that we hear, we're like, I can't do this. I want to quit. This is something like, okay, here, try this, do this, put in the work. Yeah. It's, it's just taking that small step, you know, and taking the small little changes. And, and that's kind of what we're doing with, with these things is that it's giving you that ability to take the small steps mm -hmm. each and every day that you can put into practice, make these new habits in your life so that you can, can see amazing results. But this, I hope, encouraged mm -hmm. you to continue moving forward in your family, that as you do, it's not about the big change. You know, we can't, we can't say we, we're going to have a big change and think that that's going to be practical. We're setting ourselves up for failure. We're setting ourselves up to rob that hope from us, but it is about taking certain issues and taking small changes each and every day. And then mm -hmm. before long, those become habits and then you see great rewards from it. And we just get a little better each and every day instead of trying to be just completely awesome, which you are, you're awesome. No, yeah, I agree. <laughs> you're awesome. You're doing great. No, I think as parents, you know, we take are a second really, and pat yourself on the back. Because we're so hard on ourselves. <laughs> you are really are yeah. doing great. So, but we love you guys. This is just so powerful for us. This has revolutionized us in our marriage. This revolutionized us and our blended family. Uh, our kids have seen the results from it. Like I said, this, this isn't just our thing. This is from many years of learning this stuff and yeah. passing it on because our hope is that you get to see positive results so much quicker than what we did. So it's yeah. tough. Awesome. Well, be blessed. We love you. Enjoy your family. And we will see you Friday. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, thanks for joining us today for another episode of Enjoying Your Blended Family. All the links we've talked about today, they're in the show notes below. If you've enjoyed listening, be sure to subscribe below. It, it's free and it lets you know when we have another episode for you to listen to. And if you want to help us out, leave us a rating and review so that we can keep reaching more people. Until next time, remember to enjoy the moment.